Who remembers this? SFPD! Uh, meow? That's actually the same reaction a lot of us had when we saw the Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer back in 2019. And what's interesting is, if you scroll down here, you'll actually see 19,000 upvotes, which... 19,000 is a big number. You would think that this was a well-received movie. The problem is now, you can't actually tell how many people didn't like it. And that's why today we're gonna to be talking about how with this one laptop, you can fool the rest of the internet thanks to YouTube's genius new decision with their system. YouTube has effectively removed the dislike button. It's still there. However, now publicly, we cannot see the dislike count on videos. Now YouTube released a statement talking about how this was gonna help prevent bullying and hate raid messages and just- <laughs> Now that's all good and fine. I wanna believe that their intentions were good. However, there are some really bad things that might happen as a result of this happening. The number one example being the Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer. The reason I bring that one up specifically is because if you remember back like three years ago now when they first dropped that trailer trying to capitalize on the childhood nostalgia dollars that all companies are looking to get these days, that trailer got torn a new one. It's not that people weren't into seeing that movie. People wanted to see their video games that they played as a little kid become something that they could enjoy again as an adult. But when they saw that 3D model for Sonic, Everybody screamed. It looked ugly. No one liked it. It was not representative of the actual model that existed that we remember as kids. Because everyone could see how poorly the movie was getting received, they had time to change it and make a good choice. However, now that that's not really an option, a lot of people actually aren't able to tell if there is a bad video in front of their eyes. So this has actually created an opportunity to deceive millions of people. Now I know I'm saying that with a smile, it's not a good thing, however, it is very powerful. And today I'm gonna show you exactly what we're talking about. Before we can get into that, this video is sponsored by AMD and they have specifically sent the MSI Delta 15, which is the same laptop I'm gonna be using to show you how you can fool millions of people on YouTube if you so choose. Now here's the thing about this laptop. This is not some regular sponsored laptop. This thing is actually amazing. And today we're gonna talk about it before we get into the rest of it because if you were looking to get something new, this really is something that you need to see because the performance it delivers, performance? performance it delivers is incredible. So first off, starting with the FPS benchmark test, Valorant on this laptop actually received an astounding 143 average FPS on high settings at 1080p. This thing, however, held 40 FPS above the average of what I'm used to on higher settings. On Apex, and if you don't know, Apex is one of the tougher games to run in terms of shooters and battle royales, it actually received an 81 FPS average on high settings as well at 1080p. Now again, I know that might not be the 144, 240 experience that you guys are looking for in a computer, but this thing is a laptop. Getting 81 FPS on a laptop for Apex is nuts. For Unity in Heaven, this thing also scored a 95.4 FPS average on 1080p, which after running quite a few benchmarks on this and considering the heat of the laptop is actually still a phenomenal score. And then the most interesting benchmark, which we will unpack a little bit later, was actually Furmark. For those of you that don't know what the Furmark benchmark is, it's basically taking the GPU of a computer and trying to set it on fire. Your computer's starts to render the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings, and essentially, you're putting it through hell. It is a very demanding task, and typically, I will run a computer when I'm doing that benchmark for about 30 minutes to see where it's at heat-wise and if it's still at playable FPS. And what was actually amazing, even after doing all three of the previous benchmarks, not giving the computer much time to rest, after 30 minutes, this thing was at 68 
FPS average. And not only that, somehow the GPU was also still at 63 degrees Celsius. As far as heat under load goes for this computer, this thing, again, is still weirdly impressive. Now, typically what I and literally everyone else hates about gaming or working on a laptop is that when you start to use it, it gets really hot because it's a laptop and it's at a small chassis. And when it gets hot, it gets laggy. And when it's laggy, you fail to be able to do what you want to do. And if you can do it, it's just dropping a lot of frames and it's a miserable experience. However, while using this laptop and more specifically, while I was trying to fry the GPU with Furmark and it only stayed somehow at 63 degrees Celsius, I started to wonder what made this so different because typically when you have a laptop, you normally see the temperatures on the GPU rise to about 80 or 90 degrees. And at that point, you're going to start seeing some definite lag. However, with this specific laptop, which was even more interesting is that even though it did stay only at the lower 60 degrees for Celsius on the decibel test when testing how loud the fans actually were, it was only hitting the high 50s. In English, this means a couple things. The fans and the cooling design of this laptop are top tier. It did not feel like I was gaming on a laptop. Those of you who use laptops know what I'm talking about. Sometimes after using it too long, it feels like you are gaming on a jet engine with how hot and loud that they get. And the second thing is that I assume that within this laptop, there is some precautionary measure that doesn't allow the GPU to work itself so hard that it fries itself. However, it doesn't allow it to work itself so low that you don't actually see good performance in games and tasks. Which brings me into the next part I wanted to talk about, which is the AMD Advantage qualification. In case you don't know, something that is fairly new to AMD products is the AMD Advantage certification. Basically what that means is if a laptop is AMD Advantage certified, there is a minimum expectation for performance that is going to be coming out of that product. Now, if I'm you, I immediately think, okay, this is a made up certification by a company who is trying to sell their own product. The thing is though, from what I've tested so far in this laptop, this thing is actually pretty dank. The thing that I'm constantly impressed by is that no matter what I have thrown at it, I actually don't see it overheat to the point where it becomes unusable. Now I'll be truthful, coming back to that precautionary measure thing, I'm not sure if there is something set up on this laptop to where it actually is disabling the GPU from using itself to a certain extent. However, if that is the case, it is actually balanced incredibly well. All of the games were super playable. It was a very enjoyable experience. The editing that I have done in this computer, which we will talk about in the future, was actually not stuck or laggy at all. So as far as I'm concerned at this current moment, if something is AMD Advantage certified, it is a good product. Now the laptop we're working with today is an MSI Delta 15. So there are a couple extra additional quality of life things I think we should talk about if you are gonna consider buying one for yourself. Number one and an obvious one being battery life. If you're running this thing at the highest performance setting, trying to get the most FPS and performance out of it as possible, it will last you about a little bit over an hour. While playing Valorant at the highest settings, this laptop lasted about an hour and 15 minutes minutes for me. Now, if you drag the laptop down all the way to the power saving features, it actually lasted closer to 10 hours when I was just watching YouTube videos and emailing and doing general work. Now, as for the feel of the keyboard, it actually may not be a big deal to many of you, but to me as a keyboard enthusiast, the way something actually feels when I type on it matters a lot. And to be honest, it's fine. Lower profile keycaps are typically easier on your wrist when it comes to typing on it, especially for longer periods of time. But again, it is a laptop, so there's not going to be anything special there. As far as my typing experience, it's just fine. Now, as far as the weight and portability of this thing, it's actually also a big plus for me. This laptop only weighs 4.1 pounds and it's only about an inch thick. So when it comes to moving it around and the portability and taking it with you places, it's actually really nice. Now, as far as the downsides of this laptop, there is one, but it is kind of a bit big one to me and that is that there is no ethernet port into the laptop. If you want to directly connect this device to the internet, you are going to have to get a USB-C adapter for the ethernet port. Now the thing is that might not be a big downside to a lot of you because if you're gonna be moving around from place to place, obviously an ethernet cable is not gonna be something you would even use. That being said, this laptop actually has Wi-Fi 6E which actually helps deliver a low latency experience and a smooth network connection the entire time 
time, even if you are sharing it with numerous users. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of what is actually inside this laptop. As far as processors go, this MSI Delta 15 has a 5800H Ryzen processor from AMD. Now AMD being AMD, I thought they'd find a way somehow to put 64 or 128 cores inside a tiny mobile processor. This thing does have eight cores and 16 threads, and it is actually surprisingly more than enough. The 5800H has a base clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz, which is already a lot higher than a lot of other laptops, and can max out at about 4.4 for more demanding tasks. Now, if you are a video editor, then you already know that your CPU is going to be very important for you. With eight cores and 16 threads, there is some level of expectation, which is I better not stutter all that much when scrubbing through my video files. And also, if you're a streamer, eight cores and 16 threads is more than enough to actually get the job done. Specifically to editing, we will cover that later in the video when we actually show what we're going to be doing, but I will say this, it's a really good experience. This processor packs a punch, you will definitely be able to run multiple tasks on this laptop, and you will also be able to see very good performance in whatever it is you choose to be using. Now the GPU in this laptop is a 6700M, which I was thoroughly impressed by throughout the benchmarks, so the specs for it are 2,304 cores and 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Now I know I just spit a bunch of numbers at you and if you don't care about them, I will just say in English, this is a really amazing, phenomenal, disgusting, absurd, it's a pretty nutty thing to have in a laptop. And it doesn't overheat, which again is the biggest part of this. Obviously, if you're gonna do a million things on this laptop, I'm sure you will find ways to break it if you really cared to. But as far as normal use goes and even some extreme use, it is amazing. As far as the RAM goes, this laptop has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz. And lastly, the display on this laptop, this thing has a 240 hertz refresh rate, which admittedly you might not see a ton of use for with really intense games. But if you're going to play some more casual games, you will actually get to see a full 240 FPS experience. So now that we've talked about the laptop and you understand how amazing it actually is, let's show you how we could fool millions of people with it. Now here on this laptop, I have a little bit of a trailer I've put together. It is actually not that difficult to fool people on the internet into thinking that their next favorite show has a second season coming out. Now, if you go on YouTube right now, there are already trailers that have grossed over a million views that are not even for seasons of shows that are actually coming out. And what's crazy is these trailers actually have a significant amount of upvotes, but because we can't see the dislike ratio, we actually don't really know if they're fake, which is causing a lot of disinformation. You guys remember the term fake news? It's not fun having to play the game of, hey, Hey, is this real or not? A lot of people actually like having a peer reviewed system to help figure out if this is good or not. The only thing that's stopping me right now from getting 100,000 views and uploading this today is just a deep, rich, sexy Korean voiceover, which, uh, <clears throat> H. June. I called you like three times, why aren't you in? And sadly now, more so than ever before, it is easier to fool people on the internet into believing that something is real when it isn't. And so I really hope that this system changes because I'm just not a fan of anything that helps promote false engagement. Your time is valuable, your time is precious, and you should be using it to watch things that aren't going to fool you. And as always, I hope you found this video creative, entertaining, or informative in any way, shape, or form. And as always, have a great day.